So basically you have this uh, lock box, okay, which, is, which will lock the pump for uh, no access to the drug, okay, only access to the keypad, which will be locked automatically. Well, uh, it, as for that, people who are working with PCA only should know, okay. Uh, and uh, this box is also can be locked with a key. This will be your key. So the box can be locked in two places. First, to the IV stand. You can lock the box to the IV stand. So if anybody had that, that crazy idea of taking the whole thing and run away, he has to take the, the IV stand with him. It will be harder for them. Okay? Because it happens. There's a recorded cases such like this, that attempts, okay? And the other one is to lock the pump here, to lock the whole uh, device, okay? With this key, uh, lock the whole device, so nobody can reach to the medication inside, okay? Unless this box is broke, okay? Um, so, and uh, to charge it, you have to connect uh, to the back, like the infusion pumps that you have. Uh, the, the only extra thing is that you will have this one before the charge, because this one is the, the PCA button, the one that the patient will be pressing. So you, you connect this to the pump, and to this one you connect the charger, okay? The, the power cord. Okay? So, um, do you have any questions up to this point? Now, let us show you how we put the syringe in, but we have to have the light on uh, at this stage. So first, we will open the box, okay? We switch on the pump, just like the infusion pump. One touch to the, to the power button. This is an automatic drive. Mm -hmm. Similar to the brown infusion pump, it has an automatic door. So this is not a manual drive. You cannot just do it like this, okay? It is actually more safe for such drugs because th there's no chance that you give an unintended bolus, whatever happens, okay? So after the drive will open, the pump will ask you to open syringe holder. Which is the syringe holder? It is this one. This is what holds the syringe here. But it's not uh, so this one will open automatically. This one you will have to open it by hand. How you open it? You will just pull it toward you and twist clockwise. So just do it like this. Okay. And it will stay open like this. Now, it says please insert syringe. You just have to follow what the pump says. Okay. So to put the syringe, this is a manual. So you will just open it like this. Okay. Then, you get your syringe with your drug, whatever it is. Then you put it to the pump. And to put it to the yes, pump. Sister, can you, you can also, and you will, um, will spray first this one you can put in the same and this I'm coming to this point. This is a very important point. I'm coming to it. 
But just I want to show you how, what is the technique to put in the syringe into the pump. Because uh, for, for, for smaller syringes, this pump can take syringes from 20 ml up to 60 ml. Okay? And it can give you an accurate uh, readings even with the 2 ml syringe. Okay? The whole idea is about the extinction. Because you know, you are using this extension. Uh, and you are using it all around the hospital. But what is my problem with this extension is that it's a big bore extension. So it needs a lot of fluid to fit. Yeah, I, have 50, I have 50 ml supposedly of morphine. So in order to prime, I need almost 10 ml. That means I lost 10 ml of my medication because this will never go to the patient. It will stay in here. Okay? So you should think of better options. Having lines that can take less uh, fluid inside. Okay? We will we'll come to this uh, later. So after priming it, you have to put it to uh, uh, the pump. And to put it to the pump, you have to make sure that the, the long wings will be upside down and the short wings of the syringe back and forth. So this has to go to the pump in up like this, not like this. Okay? So, but this long wings, so, so you go like this and then you twist it at a certain point. Because going like this from the start will be just hard with such size. You go like this and then you twist it inside. You end up with the long wings up down. Okay? And you have to have uh, this wing between the green part and the body of the pump. Between this green part and the body. Because you see, this will catch the syringe of the circle. Okay. Look at the green part, it's catching something. So you just put it like this, and then you return this back. Now, the pump will automatically detect the size of the syringe. Okay, it knows already that this is a 50 ml syringe. But it cannot tell what brand is this. Okay, you have to tell the pump what brand is this. And you have to be precise in that. Don't just pick anything in the list. Because otherwise it will, it, it, it will play a role in the accuracy of your infusion. And this is PCA, morphine and fentanyl, such things. Okay? So this one is actually Turumu. Yes. So you search for Turumu. This is Turumu 50 ml. There's another Turumu. There's two Turumu on this world. There is Turumu the Japan and Turumu US. So what you have, I believe, here is Turumu the Japan. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> so you just choose this one. Maybe it is made in Philippines, but you have to look for the manufacturer. Okay? Maybe it's made in China, but it's Turumu at the end. Okay? So Turumu, you choose Turumu, then the pump will catch the terrain automatically where it is. Okay? So this is how you put uh, the syringe in. Okay? Uh, now we will move to uh, the system. This is the best one? Now, can you put more to that? So after putting the syringe in, this is the first thing that the, the, the pump will ask. Do you want to use the drug library? Yes. And sure, you will say yes, because this is PCA. Now we say yes, we just press the arrow up. Then here it comes. This is all the drugs that is on this list and based on this list. Yeah, programmed already. This is for picking. 0.125% and fentanyl, publicate 0.25%. Uh, this is a PCEA drugs. OK? 
okay? You want to, you have two options. You have PCA and PCEA, the epidural anesthesia. Ah, analgesia and mm -hmm. analgesia. Mm -hmm. Patient controlled analgesia and patient controlled epidural analgesia. Okay? <coughs> so supposedly we are using PCA, so we have to choose this PCA and then go to our drug. Fentanyl, morphine, or psychodol. So if we go to morphine, for example, pick morphine, then automatically the data lock will be active. As soon as you choose your drug, then the data lock is active already. Then you have to decide the, your prescription as per the doctor order. Okay? So the bolus volume, which is how, how many mils the patient will take per, per button. Okay, then the limit, the total limit per eight hours. During eight hours, what is your total limit? Total limit. Okay, and then the lockout time. The time that is between each press, press where the patient is allowed to take. So the patient can press as many times as he wants. But if it's, if it's locked out at 10 minutes, so he will take one now, then the other active one will be only after 10 minutes. If between that, nothing will be delivered to the patient. Okay? And the concentration is already fixed. It is one milligram per one minute. So what, what you just have to tell to the pump is your BTBI, your volume to be If you tell the pump I have uh, 40 mils, that means you have 40 milligrams because it's one milligram in one minute, okay? And this rate is the basal rate. You have the option to set up a basal rate, a continuous rate that will keep running all the way. If the patient press or didn't press, he's already receiving something, okay? Uh, this is your VTBI. So my VTBI now, uh, press OK here. See, from now on, everything you will do is only after you have your password, okay? And because this is a demo, we set up the password very easy, like one, two, three, four, okay? So if you want to change the VTBI, you have to put one, two, three, four, then you say, okay, now this is my VTBI, which is 40, okay, and what is the basal rate you want? Let's say uh, one mil per hour, okay? And then this is our concentration, which is already unchangeable. Our lockout time is uh, five minutes or 10 minutes. We can change it. If you can go down, see, there's nothing between zero and 10. Why? Because this is how our doctor works. He don't want us to set any time less than 10 minutes. We mm -hmm. are not allowed to put any time less than 10 minutes. So what is the maximum we can? We can go up to 30 minutes only. Okay. So more than 30 minutes, you cannot. Less than 10 minutes, you cannot. And this is all already in this papers. We will review one of these papers now, okay? So let's set it at 10 minutes. Okay, which is, which is the minimum. So what is our limit in, in eight hours? The least is 8.05. This is the least because that means in eight hours. Eight mils in eight hours is the minimum that you can set up this pump. Why? Because supposedly the patient didn't press any time. So, and I set already the pump to run continuous rate of one mil per hour. So eight hours will give eight minutes. Okay, this is the minimum I can set. It's like a combination of all these orders, okay? So let's set it at, um, what? 16, what is it? I'll put any number because you will follow your doctor numbers, okay? So this is our limit. Now, what we can see, 
on the screen simply says that this is a morphine drug and it's on PCA and this is our polis volume, our limit, our lockout time. If you go down, you can review the concentration and the rate and the volume to be induced. Okay? Now if you connect to the patient, you can stop. I connect to the patient, then I press stop. Okay? Now it is morphine. PCA running already. What is running? This is the basal rate. The one mil per hour. It's already running. Whether the patient want or didn't want, it's already running. Then at this point, what I will do is I will close the door. Okay. And give this to my patient. And make sure that he understands what therapy is this. Simply, we can tell the patient, I know this will be very hard for those who, who cannot understand our English for you at, at first. But you have to try and tell them that this is, uh, this is a pain medication that will help you if you are feeling any pain. Uh, you can press the button when you, whenever you feel pain. Uh, you will, uh, sometimes you will get some of this medication and some pressures you will not get. But this will give you every 10 minutes small amount of drug that will allow you not to have pain, according to our anesthesia doctor order. Okay? So now, and, uh, and this one is just to connect uh, this thing to, to the patient or to the bedside or whatever, just to keep it near to the patient so he do not look for it. And, because this whole thing starts with uh, getting the patient into the therapy and getting the nurses less busy with pain therapy. They, they can treat, they can share the treatment of themselves. Rather than every time they will feel pain, they will ring the bell. I feel pain, I feel pain. If they will ring the bell every time they feel pain, then that will be... 24 hours time nurse in the cubicle or in there. So if the patient feels pain, he will press the button, look at the screen here. Now the patient receives his one bell, his first one bell. Okay? So after 10 minutes only, he can receive the other one according to our setup here. Otherwise, whatever times he will press, he will not receive anything, okay? But how many times he presses there, it will help us to uh, tell if the patient... 